Welcome back. And as you guys can see, we are filled with a sea of green in the cryptocurrency markets. And this is actually immensely refreshing considering all of the sadness, turmoil, and terrible news that came out this weekend. When we take a look at the top cryptocurrencies ranked by market cap, we notice that XRP is coming in hot at 76 cents. And this is important because it directly relates to SWIFT, which we're going to talk about in a moment. But before we do, Bitcoin current price action. If you guys watched the show yesterday morning, we live stream, we talked about Bitcoin's bullish scenario. And I said that I felt that we were going to have a really nice upward movement, but I was kind of feeling it was going to happen a little bit later in the week. Well, guess what? The markets don't care about me or my opinion. And we had a full send to approximately 41 for here. And we're getting ready to break this granddaddy trend line from approximately November 9th at $69,000. $42,000 is a crucial area to flip above. And once we do that, then we can start to tackle $46,000. But we could have some sharp rejections because of the volatility and uncertainty in the market. Now, let's go ahead and talk about what is happening with SWIFT and why this directly relates to XRP and to cryptocurrency. <laughs> On February 26th, it was announced that the West is going to cut off some Russian banks from SWIFT. And this is a downfall of centralization. And before you guys interrupt me and say, I support this or I support that, I just want to bring you the crucial key facts here. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what is happening politically, there are innocent lives at stake on both sides. And do you really think that every single person in one group believes what everybody else believes? That might not necessarily be the case. And there's a lot of innocent people who are going to be punished by this. But before we talk about that, I want to give a brief explanation what SWIFT is, because it's immensely important to understand. We generally see a lot of these terms thrown around, but there's not really a lot of education that goes on to explain them. And this is going to be very, very important. And this is also what this channel is about. So how does the SWIFT system work? This is directly from Investopedia, 100% free, and I will link you guys down below. So basically, if you need to transfer money overseas, you utilize SWIFT. It stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. What a mouthful, right? And it's a vast messaging network used by banks and other financial institutions to quickly, accurately, and securely send and receive information such as money transfer instructions. And more than 11,000 global SWIFT member institutions set up an average of 42 million messages per day through the network in 2021. So basically this payment network allows for individuals and businesses to take electronic or card payments even if the customer or vendor uses a different bank than the payee. And it works by assigning each member institution a unique ID that identifies not only as the bank name, but country, city, and branch. And interestingly enough, they updated their website. In February of 2022, the US and EU removed some key Russian banks from SWIFT, deepening their economic sanctions on Russia over its actions in Ukraine. So regardless of what side you want to agree with, and I just am really for the people here, and I need to make it very, very clear because we're going to talk about why this matters for people that have nothing to do with their governments or their leaders' actions. But basically, you're able to utilize SWIFT to send payments back back and forth, but it is a centralized entity. And when we're talking about centralized entities here, when things happen, when bad things happen, or political servants or political leaders decide to do bad things, the innocents get hurt because you're no longer able to send your family in Russia money or vice versa. And th again, this is going to impact the very, very poor people. Yes, it will impact the people with a lot of money as well, but realistically, it's gonna hurt the poor than it, more than it does the rich. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at this story. A sanctions pile, Bitcoin flips the Russian ruble. So basically it plummeted approximately 11% against the US dollar, which is Russia's native currency. And exchange data shows that Russians have turned to crypto in seeking refuge from the failing nation national currency. So crypto and Bitcoin is here to kind of save and help some of the folks over in Russia, which again, you guys, there's some people over there that are just kind of innocent bystanders here. And even this story here is actually pretty sad. Only fans says it has restored Russian creators account. Creators had reported over the weekend that they weren't able to access funds from their platform. This is just one example that has made headlines. 
not saying that I support OF, but I do support people's right to have access to their money. I support the right for people, for all humans to have access to their money, regardless of their background and their stance. And I do think that this is a human right. And it's very sad to see how some of these people are going to be impacted. And over here, South Korea bans exports of strategic items to Russia, joins SWIFT sanctions. Again, there's going to be very, very poor people that are going to actually go through turmoil because of this. It's going to impact them directly. Well, I understand why they're doing it. It's still a very sad thing to think about. There's literally people in an area that have nothing to do with what's happening, and they're the ones that are getting hurt. And this story over here, Binance, Kraken will only freeze Russian crypto traders if they're sanctioned. This story is actually particularly interesting to me. And one of the reasons why it's very interesting to me is because when we talk about cryptocurrency, we talk about a true decentralized marketplace or a true decentralized economy. And just because you don't like what somebody else has to say doesn't mean you get to take away their money. That's not how decentralization works. This works in a centralized economy. Because when we're talking about a true decentralized economy, People from all different opposing sides can come in with their thoughts and opinion. And how are you able to tell somebody how they can think? Bitcoin is permissionless. It doesn't need a central entity to tell it what to do. And yes, these exchanges are legalized and they are centralized. So basically they have to follow different legal protocol. So I actually agree with their decision here that they shouldn't be able to freeze crypto traders accounts unless these people are sanctioned. How terrible is that? Can you imagine being somewhere in the world and all of a sudden somebody says you cannot utilize our services because you live here or because you're from this background and you have nothing to do with that ideology of the public servants that represent you. That's what people want to happen. And I'm seeing all over crypto Twitter. And it's to me, it is an absolute conundrum because you want to participate in a decentralized economy. You want to reap the rewards, but there's people that are suffering and or could potentially suffer because you don't believe that they should be able to participate in a de decentralized economy. And it doesn't work that way. With things like SWIFT, yes, they can go ahead and uh, possess these sanctions and say, no, we're not going to support this or allow this because it is a centralized entity. But you don't get to have it both ways with Bitcoin. And one last thing I want to talk about here in regards to XRP. I support XRP's fight against the SEC. But it is rumored that Russia wants to create their own digital currency. And people think that XRP is going to be you know, utilize via SWIFT because every time somebody brings up SWIFT, they, they go ahead and they link it to XRP. But I'm telling you guys, and I'm calling this now on the show, I don't care what your favorite cryptocurrency is. These government entities, these countries, these political leaders are not going to utilize your favorite cryptocurrency. And it's just not going to happen. There's no reason why they would do that. If they're going to integrate any cryptocurrency, it's going to be Bitcoin because Bitcoin is truly permissionless. And at the same time, I don't think these guys want that. I think they want to create their own cryptocurrency that so they can have complete self-control over. And this is also being showcased in China. China has their own digital one, their own digital fiat currency. Why would they integrate any other cryptocurrency in that aspect? They might take some of the technology and utilize it, but why would they take a cryptocurrency that is run by an outside entity? It makes no sense. So when you're doing your fundamental analysis on a cryptocurrency project, please keep that in mind and think for yourself on that. Of course, listen to other perspectives to other people, but at the same time, be smart with your investments and be smart how you fundamentally think. Follow the money here. And if you follow the money, I think that you'll be able to understand what is happening and what they're looking for, especially countries like Russia, China, etc. Again, babes, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, set alerts, and I highly recommend you take a step away from the computer, disconnect from social media. I'm gonna go to Hot Pilates today and eat something delicious later on. And also do something kind for somebody else. The world's hurting right now and we can use all the love and support we can get. Goodbye. Okay,